got some financials for you today as Capcom have posted their financial results for their third quarter which ended December the 31st 2015 and in that year to date they recorded net sales of 57.6 billion yen which is about 480 million dollars. This is actually up 9.23 billion yen about 77 million dollars versus the same quarter in 2015, uh, 2014 rather. Profits were up 9% year on year and operating income increased 5.2%. And Monster Hunter X apparently did really well for them, actually ended up exceeding Capcom's forecasts. It sold over 3 million units and they only forecasted 2.5 million units. This makes it a pretty major hit for the title, but they did not specify if this meant shipped or sell through. As for their other new releases, Sengokia Basara Force Samuragi performed well on PS3 and PS4 while a 3DS title whose name I'm going to butcher, Diego Kuten, Kuten Saiban, did not. Sales of old releases such as, say, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and Resident Evil Revelations 2 and DLC were quote-unquote firm, especially outside Japan. Dragon's Dogma Online has also been strong, according to Capcom, whereas Monster Hunter Online is, quote, off to a good start in China. And in the mobile game, Monster Hunter Explore has surpassed 3 million downloads, so not too shabby at all. In general though, for the company, digital contents, which is non-arcade game segments, saw an 11% year-on-year increase in year-to-date sales. At 36.8 billion yen, which is about $303 million, games account for about 67, sorry, 63% of Capcom's total sales revenue for the year-to-date. However, outside of this, arcade year-to-date sales decreased 5.4%, while amusement equipment such as, say, Pachinko rocketed upwards with an 87% increase in sales, although their income didn't budge that much. Still an insane increase in Pachinko popularity. So overall, Capcom did fairly well for themselves, with Monster Hunter being a seemingly surprise hit to them. Perhaps this will mean we'll get more Monster Hunter games. That would actually be really lovely. But either way, they did pretty well, despite no major releases, despite Monster Hunter and, of course, Resident Evil Revelations 2, which, of course, is good and, of course, popular. It's not exactly what I would call one of their bigger releases. Hardly going to be as big as, say, Resident Evil 7 when that comes out. Today is truly the day for financials as EA have discussed just how they are doing as they have posted their results for the quarter ending December 31st, 2015. Now, as well as detailing how they did last year, or rather in the third quarter last year, they've also discussed in a little bit of detail what exactly they have planned for this year and even a little bit into 2017. But first, let's begin with their revenue as they posted a GAAP revenue of $1.7 billion for the quarter ending the end of December, which is a decrease on the $1.126 billion of the same quarter last year. However, despite this, they managed a record quarterly operating cash flow of $889 million, and its non-GAA figures show growth across the board. Now, EA believes it was the, quote, number one publisher on PS4 and Xbox One consoles in the Western world for calendar year 2015. And in the calendar year 2015, Madden NFL was the best-selling sports title in the US, while FIFA 16 was the top title in all genres in Europe. Now, a couple of highlights that EA mentioned are the return of Need for Speed drew more than twice as many monthly active players in Q3 than the previous game. Players logged more than 150 million hours of gameplay across Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline. And Star Wars The Old Republic grew to its highest subscriber level in nearly three years. And Madden NFL monthly, sorry, mobile monthly active players were up nearly 50% year over year. Now, after they revealed this information in a post-release call with investors, EA confirmed that they will be working a new, sorry, they are working on a new Battlefield game from DICE will be launching in time for the 2016 holiday season. They, all mention, they also mentioned rather a new Titanfall quote-unquote experience is on the way, but what that means, your guess is as good as mine. However, sadly, we didn't have a date for Mass Effect Andromeda, but it's coming, quote, later in the fiscal year which sounds like it may make the holidays this year, or it could possibly slip into Q1 2017. Now, I do have a bit of a quote here regarding EA's financial year 2017, which is running from April the 1st this year through to March the 31st next year. 
and they said, quote, In Q1, we'll begin with the creative and innovative, innovative Mirror's Edge Catalyst from DICE launching in May. A great lineup of EA Sports titles are in development for next year, and we look forward to sharing more about these new experiences in the months ahead. An all-new Battlefield game from DICE will arrive in time for the holidays. We're excited to have a new Titanfall experience coming from our friends at Respawn. And of course, Mass Effect Andromeda from the team at Bioware will launch later in the fiscal year. As for the kind of money they're expecting to make, they forecast a GWAP net revenue of $4.363 billion for the full financial year, which as I said previously is March the 31st, 2016. I'm certainly curious what they've got planned for Titanfall. I, I know it did fairly well on console, but on PC, not so much. I mean, it did it did well, but the player drop-off was pretty profound, and I'm curious if this is going to be a new one, as of course that's been rumoured for a while, or if perhaps it'll be DLC, but it seems a bit late in the game for DLC, so it's most likely an expand alone or a sequel. But of course, I could be wrong. Hopefully we'll see Andromeda this year, but uh, they haven't really made any promises. It could easily slip to Q1 next year, but uh, sorry, next fiscal year, should I say. But uh, we'll see. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.